Can you hear me? Great. So thank you. And let me start by telling you something about the general setting of this talk. So I'm going to talk about proof techniques for behavioral equivalence. We have programs, P and Q, in some language L. And we want to prove that they are contextual equivalent. So what does it mean that when we take these two programs, we put them in the same context, we want to have the same observation. And for instance, uh, in lambda calculi, as an observation, we take termination, but it really depends on the language we are considering. However, there is a big downside in that contextual equivalence is generally hard to prove because we have this universal quantification over context. And so we are interested in developing proof techniques for contextual equivalence that, of course, should be sound with respect to it. Um, by simulation, gives us a very powerful proof method for contextual equivalence. And if we have a by simulation, then to prove two programs equivalent, we just have to exhibit a relation that contains the, uh, um, the two programs and that satisfies the by simulation problem. As a desideratum, we do not only have soundness, but also completeness. And so we would like our by simulation to be fully abstract with respect to contextual equivalence. So in our work in particular, we have considered by simulations for probabilistic higher order languages. So we have languages with higher order feature, and as a paradigmatic example, we have the lambda calculus. And we have probabilistic operators. So M at some point uh, goes with probability P1 to M1 and with probability P2 to M2. Our contribution is in defining a fully abstract by simulation, in particular environmental by simulation, for uh, probabilistic lambda calculi. And that works uh, both in the call by name evaluation strategy and in call by value and uh, in lambda calculi with probabilities and also imperative features and in particular local store. So, lambda calculi, we have this calcul calculus of function, we have different evaluation <coughs> strategy called by name and called by value, and a very basic observation that we can perform is whether a term M converges or not, so it, whether it evaluates to the value. And based on the definition of convergence, we have a definition of contextual equivalence. So two terms are contextual equivalent if uh, when we put them in the same context, Either they both diverge or they both converge. So it might be pretty easy to see whether when two terms are not contextual equivalent, we just have to exhibit a context that discriminates them. But how, how do we prove that two terms actually are equivalent because of this universal quantification? And so here comes by simulation. Um, the simplest form of by simulation for uh, um, Lambda, for the lambda calculus is applicative by simulation, which is based on the definition of function extensionality. So we have a, when we have a two terms that are related, we want to be able to evaluate them. And uh, if they either they both diverge or if they both converge, we want them to, we want the values that they reach to be related. And then we have the second clause, which is a clause for values. Um, when we have related values, we give them as argument the same term, and then we want the resulting terms to be still in the relation, so to still be equivalent. Uh, applicative by simulation has been proved to be fully abstract for pure call by name and call by value lambda calculi, and it gives us very easy proofs for contextual equivalence. But uh, there is a downside in that it's a quite fragile notion. It's continuous proof relies on uh, a method uh, that uh, is sometimes hardly scalable. And it might be unsound in uh, a lot of language ex extensions, in particular those that have forms of, let's say, information hiding. So if we have imperative features and we have a, a local store, if we have a name generation or existential types. So we are interested in a, a more robust definition of by simulation and here comes environmental by simulation. The main feature of this by simulation is that we now have a by simulation that, ha that is endowed with environments, which are a set of terms that accumulate knowledge of uh, the observer during the by simulation game, and that can be used later to build the inputs for our function. So we now have this relation, this by simulation relation, um, that is intoxic with this uh, environment E, and when we evaluate two terms, 
then the values, the resulting values are put in the environment. So we keep them, we remember the values. And when we have two related values, then we use the environment to build the inputs for our function. This definition of uh, by simulation gives us a direct congruence proof for contextual equivalence, sorry, a direct congruence proof for the by simulation. Um, and it's also very robust and it has been proved, for instance, fully abstract for imperative lambda calculi, but also for concurrent higher order languages. So our question is how do we find it? How do we define it for probabilistic calculi? So what do I mean by probabilistic lambda calculi? So the easiest way to add probabilities to our language is just to add a probabilistic fair choice operator. So we just have uh, that this term, m plus n, with probability one half becomes m, and with probability one half becomes n. But now, what does a term evaluate to? So what is its semantics? So in the, prob the non-probabilistic case, the semantic of a term is either nothing, let's say, it just diverts, or it's a value, which, uh, which is rich in some number of steps. But now, in probabilistic calculi, the semantics of a term is actually a probability distribution on values. So for instance, here we have a term that with one half probability diverts, and so we actually lose this part of the term, we lose this probability, and with one half probability, we have a further probabilistic branch, and so we have with a quarter probability the identity, and with a quarter probability lambda xi. So we actually have a sub-probability distributions here. Okay, now, what is contextual equivalence now? In the probabilistic calculi, so we, we said that what we observe is the possibility of convergence. In probabilistic calculi, however, we can observe something more, which is the probability of convergence. So, and what is that? It's just the weight of the semantics of a term. So now, two terms are contextually equivalent if when we put them in the same context, they converge with the same probability, which of course might be zero. So here, for instance, on the left-hand side, we have this term that, given an argument, just converts with probability one-half. And on the right-hand side, we have a, a lambda i that uh, converts with probability i, given an one given an argument, <laughs> and uh, lambda omega that converts with probability zero. Okay, so our question is how to define a fully absent environmental by simulation for probabilistic lambda calculus. And what I'm going to present you are the three main new features that we need to add and that actually change the definition of environmental by simulation quite a lot. So let's start by noting the fact that in probabilistic and higher order languages, we have an infinitary semantics. The idea is that we have a higher order operator so we can encode fixed points. And we can apply these fixed points to probabilistic terms and so here we have this term, yn. After, a few, after some evaluation steps, we have uh, with one half probability, the identity. And we have, with one half probability, we are back from the beginning. And so then we have the identity with a quarter probability and then with, with one over eight. And by summing up all this probability, we will we'll get that the semantics of this term is actually the identity with probability one, but we reach this only in the limit. But now we have a problem because yn is actually contextual equivalent to the identity. They just have the same semantics. But there is no finite approximation of the semantics of yn, so no distribution reachable in a finite number of steps that is equivalent to the semantics or equal to the semantics of i. And that's the reason why we need to take into account our first new feature, which consists in having a by simulation that has these infinitary big step reductions in the clauses. So before we had reductions that uh, only took into account a finite number of steps, but now we have reductions that might be infinite. This is the, the, the semantics is defined as the supremum of uh, probability distributions reaching the finite number of steps. So this is the first new feature, but now we have a problem because uh, we had the by simulation that was just defined on term, but now what we reach, the semantics of term, are actually probability distribution. So the problem here is, 
what does it mean that we are relating probability distribution? Should the bisimulation game be played on terms or should it be played on distributions? As a first attempt, we can try to define the bisimulation essentially on terms, and this is the easiest way, and then use a, a probabilistic lifting to relate the two distributions. What does it mean that, well, we basically ask the probability distribution to assign the same weight to related terms, and then we play it again just on terms. However, we might have a problem because uh, this attempt, this solution does not work if we, have, if we have to prove distributivity instances. What do I mean? Well, a distributivity instance is, uh, is just an equation in which uh, basically the abstraction distributes over the probabilistic choice. So first question, do we have uh, distributivity? Well, actually this depends on the, on the language and in particular on the coping capabilities of the context of the language that we are considering. So if we are in call by name, in general these laws hold whatever M and M we are taking. If we are in call by value calculi, well this doesn't hold in general and indeed we can have this example for instance of terms for which it doesn't hold, so this is an, just an instantiation of the law. And the idea is that uh, we can really exploit here the coping capabilities of, co of call by value to discriminate these two terms. We just run them in the argument of some function and then we copy the resulting values and we test them multiple times. And by testing them multiple times here we have different, we have different probabilities. However, uh, this is, distributivity is not only a call by name issue. What happens is that uh, if we consider, for instance, calculi with a, a private location, so with a local store, we can build the terms M and N whose behavior depend on, their, on the value of some location, so they will be of the form if uh, L is zero, then do this, otherwise do that. And um, we can prove these terms to be contextually equivalent. Uh, we want to, this term to be contextually equivalent because uh, well, we now have a, a, a lot of coping capabilities in call by value, but when we have a private store, we actually cannot copy it. So to discriminate these two terms, we would need to be able to copy the, the, the local store. Okay, so at the end of the day, what happens is that uh, we actually have some distributivity instances, and when we have distributivity instances, we cannot define the bisimulation on terms. So let me tell you why. Consider, for instance, call by name. In call by name, we said that distributivity generally also this law holds, this, sorry, this, uh, this equation holds for contextual equivalence. However, what happens if we try to define the bisimulation on terms? Well, we want the bisimulation to be fully abstract with respect to contextual equivalence, so these two terms should, should be related. Then uh, we evaluate them, and we would like these uh, distributions to be in the lifting, the probabilistic lifting of the relation. What happens is that, however, for them to be in the probabilistic lifting, we, we would have to relate this term both to this term and to this term. But this, this doesn't hold because we don't want to prove these terms equivalent, they are not. What's going on here is that uh, we have an equivalence at the level of the distributions, but when we try to decompose these distributions, we have terms that are not contextual equivalent. So we do not really want to decompose these distributions, and so we want to actually define the bisimulation directly on probability distributions. So here we have clauses in which we have related probability distributions, reduction from the probability distributions to probability distri distributions of values, and we we'll want this to be related again and possibly, and of course to have the same total weight. But aren't we forgetting something? Yes, we are forgetting about the environment. So we wanted to define environmental bisimulation and we started from this definition of bisimulation with environment, which is very robust. We want this form of bisimulation. And how do, we add, how do we add the environment now? I mean, it's not clear what, what should we do with that environment. And here comes the third new feature of uh, environmental bisimulation in the probabilistic case. Uh, what probabilities teach us in the probability, um, for bisimulations, for environmental bisimulations, is that we need to distinguish between two forms of environment, a static and dynamic environment. 
The static environment is just a pair of terms, a fixed pair of terms that represents the terms, ideally, that we want to prove equivalent. And then we have this dynamic environment in blue here that uh, are just a, these growing tuples of values that are produced in the bisimulation game and that are directly embedded in the probability distributions now. So why do we have these two forms of environment? Well, we said while discussing these uh, distributivity examples that the coping capabilities of the context are fundamental in, in, a probabil in the probabilistic uh, contextual equivalence. And so what happens now is that we actually want our by simulation to depend on the coping capabilities of the context, and in particular, we want the environment to depend on the coping capabilities of the context. So we'll have different environments for different calculi. So in call by name, for instance, only the initial terms can be copied, and so what happens is that we only have a static environment. So we only have this pair of terms. We don't have the blue part of the by simulation. In call by value, instead, what we can copy are both the initial terms and the values that are produced while interacting with the terms. And so we have both the static environment and the dynamic environment. Okay, so let me recap. These were the three main new features that we need to add to our probabilistic environmental by simulation to have full abstraction. So first we have a infinitary big step, by simulation clauses with infinitary big step reductions because we have this infinitary sem semantics to deal with. Then we have a, a by simulation relation defined on probability distributions because we have these, uh, distribu these instances of the distributivity law. And then we have to deal with these two different forms of environments uh, because we have contexts that have different coping capabilities. Okay. And with the by simulation defined this way, with these three main new features, we have our result of full of our full abstraction result. And so now environmental by simulations, we have environmental by simulation that is fully abstract for probabilistic lambda calculi in call by name, in call by value, and with imperative features and even the local store. We also have a better definition of environmental by simulation for the non-probabilistic calculi. Because this uh, static and dynamic environment difference can be, can, we can take it to the non-probabilistic setting and apply it there. And in, if we do this, we now have, a, let's say, easier environmental by simulation to deal with in the non-probabilistic case as well. Let me mention a few further results. So, we said that our by simulation must have infinitary big step reduction. However, in proofs, in particular in congruence proof, we want to be able to reason by induction on the, on the number of the reduction steps. And so what happens is that we actually need to look at the finite approximants of the semantics of terms, so at the distribution that we reach after a finite number of steps. And so we, have now, we now have proofs that are based on a finite step simulation. And then we have saturation theorem that tells us that uh, we can just uh, move from a finite step simulation to an infinitary step, to an infinitary, let's say, simulation and back. And then we have, uh, we exploit the, the determinism of our calculi and the fact that now by similarity is just a kernel of, simul of simulation equivalence, let's say. And so we can move from simulations to by simulations. As a further result, uh, we presented some up to techniques for our environmental by simulations. These are techniques that allow us to simplify proofs of equivalence by, by simulation, and they're particularly important for higher order languages where even the by simulation might be a bit complicated and too big to deal with. So we propose non probabilistic up to techniques. And we propose probabilistic up to techniques in which uh, we actually uh, allow in the, during by, the by simulation game to get rid of some probability information that is redundant that we do not really need to keep track of. Okay, and then I want to mention some future work. So it would be very interesting, I think, to develop further up to techniques because as I was saying, these are particularly important in this setting. Then. Uh, 
another field would be, what about if we, ha if we add concurrent operators or non-determinism to the language, what happens? And finally, it would be interesting to have an formulation of environmental by simulation, for instance, in a more general setting. So, thank you very much. Thank you, that was very nice. Um, you. Have you given any thought to working in typed lambda calculi rather than the untyped lambda calculus? So, uh, well, in our experience, working with the untyped lambda calculus is quite harder than working in typed lambda calculus, so we had to deal with all this. Might be harder, I mean, because we had to deal, for instance, with uh, uh, all these this infinitary semantics that maybe we, if we had a simply typed calculus, we could get rid of. And so, no, we, we, we decided to, to work on untyped lambda calculus. So. Yeah, work, working on the typed lambda calculus is uh, not necessarily easier because you have fewer observers. Your observers, of course, also have to be well typed. Yeah. Um, yes. And the second question uh, is, have you given any thought whatsoever to uh, continuous choice? Your choices are all binary. Uh, um, so, uh, no, here we have a, so we, we of course are in a completely discrete setting. We don't have a continuous choice. No, we haven't considered this. I think it would be a very interesting topic for, for future works. I know that there are people working on this right now, but I mean, not, not even on the equivalent side, but even on how to define the semantics of a continuous lambda calculus, I think it would be very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So I have uh, two questions. And first of all, uh, so I don't understand the last future work about what is the abstract formulation you think about. Sorry, I don't understand. The last item. Can you explain a bit more? The third one? Third one, yes. Oh, okay. So, well, we now have environmental by simulations that uh, have a, a, gen a general scheme, scheme that uh, is then, is then instantiated to all our calculi. So as I was saying, we have, for instance, by simulation with the environments and the environments are different in the different calculi. So I think it might be interesting to better understand, for instance, precisely the, if there is a general way to define the relation between environments and the context of the language, for instance. But also, I think that this could also mean lead to a more, foundation, more foundational work, for instance, look at environmental by simulation in a quadrupeg setting, mm -hmm. so in more right. abstract right. setting in this sense. And Thank another you. question is, if I remember correctly, you have work of the higher order value passing calculus and probability by simulation with Davide, and so, I don't know, so your calculus treat local difference, but the difficult part of the, for example, higher order pi calculus is new name channel passing. And are you considering this kind of creation of the local state and concurrency and what would be the most challenging part? So I think that dealing with concurrency and probabilities is particularly challenging. Because as I was saying before, so let me go back. Okay, so here, what I was saying here is that for our proofs, so for our proofs of congruence in particular, we essentially exploit the determinism of the language. So we really, so as a, as a first step in this direction <laughs> would be understanding how to have a congruence proof that do not need to first 
w work on simulation and then move to by simulation. So this will be a big first step, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.